Like when you think about your career in activism these last four or five years, what's the pinnacle so far? Honestly, my walk to D.C., the thing that just ended on the 28th. All these activists were going to bust out there, and I was like, man, what if I walked out there to honor Dr. King, like the 57th anniversaries of his I Have a Dream speech, so it was my ability to honor him and George Floyd at the same time. Yeah. We walked from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, to Washington, D.C., yeah. 750 miles. It took us 24 days to get there. Why not do a night march, right? It's the revolution. This is the revolution! So tell me about what Milwaukee was like after the George Floyd killing. Milwaukee was the most segregated city in the United States of America a couple years running. Um, a lot of things that we did during the marches brought everyone together. You had white people, black people, LGBTQ, young, old. The Bucks came out and marched with us. Yeah, I saw a side of Milwaukee I never saw. After the Floyd thing, the marches went on for a long time. But does this thing feel different to you, the Jacob Blake thing? I don't think the emotion has changed. But now you have the masses, now you have voters that are upset. So that's why the politicians are talking about it. People are tired and they're not gonna stop. Yeah. This, like, this isn't a negotiation, this is a, a demand. That's why it's the revolution, because we're not asking for change. We won't stop until we get it this time. Normally when people talk about revolution, they're talking about overthrowing something. Like right now there's a lot yeah. of people scared, right? For sure. Trump's capitalizing on the fear. Yeah. White people are afraid afraid of the protests, afraid of what they think is the riots, the looting, whatever. They're afraid of all that stuff. We're not here to make white people comfortable. Right. So we're here to make them uncomfortable. Yeah. Um, white people have been comfortable for too long yeah. <laughs> with white privilege. Yeah. I understand white privilege is a great thing. Who wants to give up privilege? <laughs> you know what I mean? I understand that. But when I think about the revolution, um, yeah, I am speaking of the revolution. I don't think the government needs to be overthrown, per se, but it's time that the government works for the people. When we're marching and the police are lining up to Billy Club, white, black, Asian, Hispanic, LGBTQ, who are they working for? Yeah. Us or themselves? Have the protests here been 100% peaceful, mostly peaceful? It's good trouble. I think, I think all is needed. Um, I don't condemn riot, rioting or condone it. Um, but two things, I think, one, they have to be separated. A lot of times when we were peacefully protesting, late that night somebody would come out and ride and we'd be asleep. Yeah. And they would say, the peaceful protesters turned into rioters. Like, no, they're two separate groups. Um, but like Martin Luther King said, the riot is the voice of the unheard. So if a person is fighting against their oppressor, I'm not one to say how they should fight against their oppressor because I don't know what's going to get changed. Yeah. Honestly, I don't know if peaceful talks will get changed. I don't know if buildings being burned will get changed. All I know is that sometimes the attention isn't being put on the people until they burn stuff, um, until they tear things up. With Trump trying to make this into a big issue, the law and order thing, but it feels right. like there's just a lot, of, a lot of intensity building in this moment. Yeah, and I think it's a different type of tension, which is a little bit scarier because now the tension is more like protesters against anti-protesters, more than police and government versus Black Lives Matter. And that shift actually is more dangerous. Right. It's the people versus the people. It seems like a race war can crack off at any moment now. And that would be the worst thing that could happen to America.